morning everybody today we're going to be into chapter four my bible study last time was on genesis chapter one through three we learned about how the bible doesn't give us the specifics of what happened with the serpent but it's the belief of many people this is why we have so much wickedness in this world and this is why sin was such a big thing it wasn't just a fruit but it's a metaphor the fruit sorry because i'm in a parking lot because I'm traveling so you're gonna hear a lot of noises around okay so what happened was um, Eve, the, the snake beguiled Eve charmed her and then she slept with Adam afterwards so from what we get from that is she was pregnant she was pregnant with two children and it is possible and I'll post it here what that is called that was in my last video that I posted um, that's not a Bible study but it was just talking to you about some of the um, things that are going on in this country with the wickedness that there is in this world and why we have so much wickedness and if we continue to try to hide the wickedness in this world by saying it's an apple and not really understanding what the wickedness was why the sin was so bad why it changed everything for mankind and then why God ended up doing the uh, putting out putting the flood for Noah later on when we move into chapter 6 so we have to understand this is why this was so severe it wasn't just something that you should take lightly and when we started in chapter in genesis 1 we also learned how important heaven was at the same time that the earth was 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 created he built both of them together because they were supposed to be together and then evil came into the world and of course now we have our choice we either go to, to be with god or we have the choice to to be in the underworld with the evil one so we really have to especially now understand that there's so much wickedness in the world and where it's coming from and we can't play around with this little apple thing anymore we really have to know who are the people and what is going on around us so with that said let's get into Cain and Abel chapter 4 I'm using my King James version I'm going to be reading out of that and I'm also going to be reading out of my strongest concordance that is on my four and Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and she and said, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his, and she, I want you to listen to this. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground that second centrist and she again and she again the word again is to add to augment exceed further gather it didn't say and later on it says and again so at that moment right after she bore Cain she bore Abel okay and she again bare his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So probably it was a fruit that fell. Instead of picking like the best fruit for God, he just probably was lazy and he picked up a fruit off the floor and then he offered it to God. So he didn't offer God the best. He offered God what was easy and convenient for him. So that's what he did. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So Abel took more time in looking for the, the offering for God. So he had more respect for Abel. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. So in other words, if you don't do well, it's considered a sin. If you stay and you walk in God's path, if you're doing well. And unto thee shall be his desire. That is, if you're walking with the Lord, you will have your desires and thou shalt rule over him so in other words you have to do what is right let's talk about some things so what we get from this is you have to learn to master sin it will be a lifelong battle that's what god is telling him to follow in the right way 
So we're thinking that perhaps Cain's attitude was improper and his gift was not his best. And that's what we're talking about because he picked it up off the floor. And maybe he had the wrong motive. So instead of him wanting to do for God, he just wanted to be recognized for his efforts. So that's not really doing it for God. It's really for you to get the attention that you want. So that's probably the wrong motive he was doing it for. God evaluates both our motives and the quality of what we offer him. Give with a joyful give with a joyful heart. Do not worry about how much you are giving up for all things are God's in the first place. God gave Cain a chance to right his wrong and try again. And Cain refused to admit his mistake. He was jealous and he was angry at his brother. So those are some of the lessons that we're going to take from this chapter, from this area here. We go to number 8, Genesis 4, 8 says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. This is the first murder of the Bible. The Lord places a curse upon Cain. So after he killed him, and the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. I am my brother's keeper. So well, I don't know where he is. Do I look like I, you know, I'm supposed to know? So he's trying to play it off. He's trying to play stupid. What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. So he's just basically going to be a wanderer, home, homeless wanderer on earth. This was a curse that God was putting on him. Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from my face shall I be hid, and I'll be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. So now he's worried that he's going to come across, you know, derelicts in the desert or whatever, and people are going, he's going to get killed. This is what the Lord said, and the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whoever slayeth Cain, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So he protected Cain. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. I just want to say about that God punished us to correct us and to restore our fellowship with him. So the punishment was in order to restore him to fellowship with God but he never chose that he was never the kind of person for them and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch and unto Enoch was born Erod and Erod beget Mehuel and Mehuel beget Methuel and Methuel beget Lamech. After 18, uh, it talks about Lamech and his two wives. Now remember, in those days you weren't supposed to have two wives. So he was already being sinful because he had two wives. You're not supposed to have a harem, you're supposed to have one wife. So you saw how wickedness was already starting here. I'm going to skip 19 to 24. I'm going to go because it just talks about different people and stuff. I'm going to go to the birth of Seth and Enos and it says on number, on number 25 chapter 4 25 says and Adam knew his wife again and she bare a son and called his name Seth. So now Adam and Eve had another son named Seth. They had Abel and now they had Seth and it's confirmed in the next part and it says for God said she so she said hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. So she's saying that God gave her another seed, which was Abel. She never said God gave me another seed, which was Cain and Abel. So here it's confirming it was the seed of the devil. 
and that just confirms it for me as well so let me read you my notes here it says one seed was Abel of Adam Seth would take the place of Abel as leader of a line of God's faithful people so in other words Seth was now going to take the role what Adam couldn't do Seth is going to be taking over now so this is a lineage of God and he's preparing his people to be followers of him and fellowship with him so Seth is supposed to be taking that place of a person that doesn't sin and to Seth to him also there was a born a son and he called his name Enos then began men to call upon the name of the Lord so in other words at that point out with Seth was following in the ways of God and Enos was also following in the way of God and we'll get to chapter 5 at another time but I just want to read you some of my notes here. It says that Abel obeyed God. Conflicts among children is inevitable. Cain got hangry. He could correct himself or he could take his anger out on Abel. He made a choice intentionally. He reacted negatively and his offer to God was not from the heart. You can see what I read to you is from the Bible. I'm reading you straight from the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? And there's nobody else that's going to change it any other way. It's very clear in a lot of these passages that the seed, there was one seed that was of God's, and the seed that was not of God's really had a lot of uh, choice to do the right thing, and he didn't do the right thing. I mean, he was still part of God because it was Eve was through God, so it was still a part of God, but it had a chance to rectify and create a fellowship with God and he never chose. Cain decided to do his own thing. He was evil in his ways and it showed in the Bible verses. So that's chapter 4. We will continue the rest of it later on. I don't want to make this too long this week but I just want to follow up this particular part and the verses that are very um, symbolic of the fact that Cain was not the seed of Adam and Eve. It was the seed of the serpent. So, uh, if you're not sure about what I'm talking about, then please go to my Bible study number one. I'll link it below, and I'll link, I'll link and I'll link another one below so that you can also see the two videos that I've done. One is the actual Bible study of one through three. The other one was just talking to you of why you have to know about the wickedness that there is, the wicked people that they're out there right now, and the things that they're doing, and they're trying to keep you without finding out the truth so a lot of things um, they're trying to make sure that you don't know about these other entities that are in the world right now who are evil and demonic and what's going on so with that said i thank you for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and that's muffin snoring by the way here with me stay tuned because i have my other bible study is coming up on chapter five so i thank you so much for watching today have a wonderful and lovely day god bless Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Have you ever dreamed of traveling but don't necessarily want to be alone? Well, now you can join the Ghost Squad Caravans. It's not part of a club, but of a nomadic community where uncommitted bonds are formed, where cliques with clubs can form and introverts or newbies to the group can feel left out. We are different. By connecting with other women during your travels, you can enjoy the uncommitted lifestyle that nomadic traveling provides. With an opportunity for you to fellowship, explore, share adventure, and sit with good company, Ghost Squad Caravans are here to give you a place within a space. This is your life, your choice. Make it your best season yet. We provide emergency contact, mentoring, support, group connection, and the ability to share those connections. Ability for you to locate your pals and connect with new ones. Encourage, inspire, but most of all to love with godly love within the nomadic lifestyle.